biracial. So for me, um, especially just like as of recent, uh, thinking about it, I don't really think you can necessarily say like you're mixed race, right? Like for me, like, yes, is my mom white, is my dad black. But at the end of the day, the way in which I present, the way in which I'm <laughs> identified by the government and things of that sort, I'm black, right? And so um, even though like my uh, ancestral background uh, doesn't necessarily always look like that, um, the way in which I present to you today and just thinking about the way in which race uh, is defined and constructed by the law for each time period like it changes and it's dependent upon uh, those in power and today has there been uh, more discourse around you know uh, talking about being biracial and of mixed race and racial ambiguity um, but if you look at it by law that's not necessarily uh, I mean it says more than one race um, but at the end of the day, when you do look at me, um, you know, I'm, I'm identified as black. 2020 kind of defined that even more so for myself, my politics and kind of learning more about the way, cause I mean, like, I, like I'm still like super young um, in the grand scheme of things. So when all of that was happening, I had just turned 20. You kind of have a lot of time to sit with yourself um, and like, you just have a lot of time to read and things of that nature, um, and especially like through Twitter, because there's no essence to race, right? It's always defined by, in, uh, at least in the US context, um, by the law, right? <clears throat> and by the courts. Because I used to think of it like, oh yeah, well, of course I'm black, like it's because like my skin color, things like that. Like, yes, is it like part, like is that part of the definition which they want to define it as, but it's also other things as well. I feel like educating people um, about what it means to be biracial in the context in which I look at it. I feel like it would help to break down that essentialization of like uh, race, if that makes sense, right? So then if I am adding like another identifier for what another race will be, then that's just adding more like essence to what race is, period. And obviously within our political systems, um, of the world and such and economic systems and how those uh, reinforce each other. I mean, you're never really gonna get out. You can like think outside of that framework, but you're never gonna get outside of that framework via, via the way in which the systems work. Like you, even if I am thinking outside of that, I'm still have to work within the system that it is because I'm like, it's not a individual issue and things of that nature. And we have to kind of look at it from that standpoint and then as a collective, once we have a better understanding of that, then there's ability to then change that structural and institutional thing and not look at it from the individual basis because as a collective, we now have that collective knowledge. What does black history mean to me? Uh, for me, it's a very uh, empowering thing um, to kind of root myself in uh, this understanding of uh, just my my ancestry. So my, my last name is Ismail, and it was, it was supposed to be Skinner. Like my, my great uncle, his last name is Skinner, and then my cousin's last name is Skinner, but my my dad and then his two other brothers, like all of us, our last name is Ismail, and that, that's a powerful thing for me um, because my, my grandfather coming up throughout the time um, and then up until, you know, the 60s and 70s and the civil rights movement and uh, things of that nature, went and uh, went over to Egypt and studied in Cairo, converted to Islam, uh, became Muslim. The whole movement over here with the Nation of Islam and Malcolm X and things like that. Um, and my, uh, I think even my grandfather like uh, has some some form of relationship with with Malcolm X, even when he was over in Egypt studying. That's where he found our last name, my great great grandfather, when he was enslaved in Jamaica. His first name was Ismail. So for me, it's just a very powerful thing to to understand um, even my own grandfather's personal journey. To, to get to that point of empowerment. And then for me, um, even moving forward in my life, uh, where, where I kind of want to see myself and what, and what inspires me um, to, to pursue. Um, so that's, that's what black history means to me. It's a really empowering thing. In terms of like me even knowing my black history and then being lucky enough to know <laughs> and have access to, my, my uh, grandfather died when my dad was really young, but my uh, great uncle, uh, he's still alive and that's where I kind of learned the whole entire uh, history of that and the background of that. I'm one of the very, very few people that is able to access that 
that history because of the complete destruction of our own history like there was no record of any of our peoples because we weren't people the collective ...ness of being black, what it means to be black. And I know I was talking about, like, there's no essence to it, but it's, like, it's still a real thing. Like, it's still so many real consequences within our world. Um, and and even when I didn't know that, just having that collectivism of, like, all right, like, I'm black and just uh, what that means to me without even knowing my past history, but knowing the collective ancestral history and the collective movement of it. Because even my, my own grandfather and things like that, like he didn't do all that stuff on his own. He didn't figure all that stuff out on his own. He didn't have that journey on his own. Collectivism is even even more more so powerful than even knowing my own uh, personal uh, family history.